It's so great to see some beautiful faces, some really good homies here and some old coworkers I see, so it's great. Um, thank you, uh, Brandy, George, Justin, John for having me. It's, I'm excited to talk about D.A.R.E. I'm just gonna go dive in. I mean, the definition of D.A.R.E. is pretty much to have enough courage or confidence to do something. And I think that's just how I live my life. I mean, growing up Chinese Canadian in Toronto, uh, you know, being an, a, a child of an immigrant family, we have to ascend, like being a minority and being a, a, an immigrant, you know, in Canada or in the United States or anywhere, you, we have no choice but to take a leap and to dare ourselves to be better or to have a, or create a better life for ourselves. So I think it's always been um, ingrained in me and a part of who I am. Um, so I'll just, I guess I'm just going to talk on the moments, the pivotal moments and the times where I really challenged myself to just go for what, I mean, to where I am today. So basically, you know, Chinese Canadian family immigrated to Canada. And I mean, it, it wasn't an easy challenge, um, but I believe that my family and my grandparents on both sides, you know, took the challenge and were confident enough to put themselves out there to provide for their family, right? So that right then and there is being vulnerable to the surroundings, to the situation. Um, and I think I was, it wasn't spoken about, it wasn't like a le life lesson at dinner tables. Okay, so this is what you're going to do. You're going to dare yourself to be a better person. It was just, just knowing what our challenges were and what were thrown at us and witnessing my fa older family members go out and just do it, just lead by example, taught me to do the same thing. So, you know, I went to college on a soccer scholarship at 19. I left Canada, a very diverse, ethnically diverse city, big metropolitan city. And I decided to move to Missis Gulfport, Mississippi. I mean, the population of the college I went to was I think 1200 and my highest, not even, I think I'm going a little high, but my high school graduating class was a little over 900 students. So you can imagine me, you know, stepping out of Toronto when my graduating high school class was almost 900 folks to a small campus in so Southern Mississippi, um, where there was, there was a large Vietnamese population on the coast, but however, where I was in at a Southern Baptist college, um, there was not a lot of room or people that looked like me. Um, so right then and there, that was, a, I chose to trust myself to put myself in college play soccer and try to achieve whatever a degree that I wanted. And then fast forward, you know, I wanted to cook for a living because I love cooking. Um, and I decided to go to culinary school at 35. I mean, I never thought in a million years after I graduated college, I would go back to school because I was not a good student. I just went to party really and play soccer. Um, and I graduated, thank goodness. Um, but you know, I decided to go to culinary school at 35. And, you know, a lot of people think when you're in your 30s, mid 30s to 40s, you know, we don't have the time or energy. We're a little scared to, to change careers, to, you know, even um, have, decide to start a family or get married or whatever that may be. We all, as society, we think of age as I like a final end, right? So we think, oh, well, I'm in my 40s, you know, I shouldn't change careers or, or, or start a new project or pick up a new hobby. Why not? Right? I mean, I think this pandemic has taught us a lot about being courageous and trusting ourselves. Um, I'm sure I'll speak for myself, but I'm sure there's a lot of people out there probably listening that this past year taught us to follow our gut and to basically go with what our inside voice is telling us, right? Um, and if you haven't, and you've got inside voice is talking to you current day, I will empower you to listen to that voice, right? Because our inside voice knows us and knows what we deep, deep, deep down inside want, right? So we need to dare, we need to trust ourselves enough to take that leap of courage and have the confidence 
to take the next step, right? I mean, I had a very, very comfortable, amazing job with Katie Button Restaurants. That's where I, the, she's the only person I ever worked for in Asheville. And um, when I decided to leave, it was, I didn't know the pandemic was gonna happen. I gave my notice on February 1st, gave her two months notice. My last day was April 1st and the restaurant shut down on March 16th. I'm not gonna lie, I was scared. I was like, ooh, did I make the right decision? You know, And I kind of put myself out there as we were all saying bye, because we thought, I thought we were only gonna be shut down for two weeks. So I'm like, oh, you know, okay, Katie Bunn, if you need help reopening, I'll help because I was scared. I didn't know where I was gonna get a paycheck. I, for five years of my life, I was so used to getting a paycheck every two weeks. I knew exactly what was coming in. Um, so I could budget and I was able to do that. And the restaurant shut down. Two weeks passed. We still didn't open up. Went to months. Um, and I think by the third month, I was. So when I gave my notice, I already knew I wanted to start my own business. Knew that I wanted to introduce Cantonese food to Western North Carolina. Like George was saying, we, we bonded over Cantonese food because it's, I think, First and foremost, Cantonese food is underrated. I don't believe that a lot of us exactly know what Cantonese food is. We know what Chinese food is, and I'm, I'm gonna air quote this. It's so broad, right? So I want to introduce Cantonese food to Western North Carolina the way I grew up eating it, right? It's not fancy. The flavors are fresh um, and it's just not fancy. I came from working for a chef that is really fancy and she's up there. She's earned every accolade, accolade that she um, has given. Um, I just want to step away and just cook grandma's recipes, right? Because that's our comfort food. That, that's what keeps us warm. That's what keeps us happy. That's what brings us love. So I just chose to take the leap and um, I'm so grateful that I did. And I think, you know, growing up, knowing that there was no other choice for us but to take the big steps and to lead with our heart and what our inside voice is telling us to do. I think that truly helped me to get to where I am today um, because I was scared, but the fear wasn't enough for me not to do it. I think the fear was if I didn't do it, what is going to happen? Um, so I encourage everyone to you know, maybe think of something this weekend. I encourage every single one of you, I challenge every single one of you that's listening right now to, you know, think of something that is daring to you. Think of something that makes you a little uncomfortable and challenge yourself to that this weekend. Whether that be take a three mile hike by yourself, um, whether that be sitting in silence for 15 minutes right? That's very uncomfortable for some people. Or, you know, um, take a class, you know, take a pottery class, take a painting class, or pick up a new instrument. You know, I just think in order for us to grow as human beings and really know who we are, we need to put ourselves in difficult situations and dare ourselves to do that, right? So I challenge you to have enough confidence and the courage to be a better person, and step out of your box, you know, try something new that makes you very uncomfortable. Um, because I think that when we are uncomfortable, that's when we truly, truly can figure out who we deep, who we are deep down inside.